the enumerations were going on, we started observing a trend. And this was the other thing about the data collection. I think the data in the algorithm had taken like three years for us to return. And when we went back, we, we observed <laughs> the Goreti, the settlements that were in Mtwini, there's one settlement called Kaburi. It's actually a graveyard. Yeah? So the structures are very close to the graveyard. So you can see people burying. Mm. Uh, so one time we passed there and we, you know, you look at the grave and you look at the people who've just been buried like recently. Uh, you, you can tell by, you know, the dates indicated there. But then we also looked at the age of the most of the people who had been buried and we observed they were young people. A lot of them were young people. And we started asking what's happening? What's killing all these people, uh, the young ones? So that question started disturbing us in a way. In Huruma, uh, again, we kept on recalling how difficult sometimes the process, even for us as community organizers, entering the community and sometimes getting this feeling of insecurity. As you go to facilitate a meeting, uh, a saving meeting in Mahera or in Redeemed or in Kambemoto, uh, you would require the support of the Federation to escort you to the meeting and get you out of the meeting. In a sense, the whole issue of young people came to us. Like, there's a constituency here as much as we talk about savings that need to be uh, to be approached or we need to reach out to. I remember the conversation between Jane, uh, Jack and myself and they kept on asking what is it that you think <laughs> can be done? I remember doing enumerations in Dagoreti with Kimani mm -hmm. and then coming back to return the data to the community. We processed it very fast and then one week after we, we came back to return the information. And when we returned the information, three young people had passed. Mm -hmm. And we asked people, how come three young people? And they told us one had died of HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. one had been shot, and one had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And then the more we looked at our enumeration data, we, we realized the youth and the children were 60 percent of slum dwellers. Uh, so there was that need. It took a bit of time really to make the youth agenda an agenda to be considered uh, amongst these important other issues that the Federation and the institution was dealing with that time. And, and what came out immediately was, okay, if we approach the youth where they were, do you think we'll be able to make any impact, even in changing their lives? Um, and the question of mentorship came. So the idea was developed by uh, Bidan, and us we were interested in putting the model in practice somewhere in Huruma, in Madare, and, and we, Kambimoto for, was like the first ground to test out the, um, the, the children, uh, the mentorship program. Uh, the new dawn uh, translated to muamko, muamko, new dawn, eh? uh, new nascent, new beginning. It was basically what we had in mind was how do we get some of the youths who are already interested maybe in doing something positive in the settlement to journey with the children and transform their lives. And uh, of course the program evolved. Um, started and the activities for us that were coming informed by the young people that would be resonate well were things to do with sports, culture, the mentorship program itself and a solid one that will connect them with the rest of the settlement was the waste management. The whole mentorship program was again to be linked with the organizing and it was the question of how do we get children participate. And the idea of involving children was to cut the generation of those going to join drugs, those going to join crime, <laughs> because we knew those who were recruiting, the gangs were moving very fast as well. So, and we kept on uh, brainstorming and sharing with the mentors and saying, are we catching up really? Who is keeping their children busy? So the children were to be kept busy 
during school holidays through sports and cultural activities. And how the Muamuko um, organized this was through festivals. So at, say, Korokocho area, which was a ward by itself, going to each village, and each village ensuring that they have a sport tournament that brings every child into the tournament, and uh, a cultural event so that those who do not fall into sports can use cultural event as their, as their, as their, as their, uh, as their space. And of course, during the holidays, these mentors now who are seniors would help them in education. There was a time, and every year, they would pick a theme. The first theme was education is a right. Yeah? And that theme was internalized through sports, would be internalized through the drama, and they will, the art pieces will, would be used you know, to, to bring out the themes. So that weekend, the idea is to occupy, to keep this child busy. If you let them lose, the other, the vampire <laughs> will grab them. <laughs> the vampire will take that. Mm -hmm. So the idea was not to let go of that space. So they would rehearse. And then uh, first term of the school holiday, which would come around April, they would do the inter-villages competition. Second term, it will be like central settlement-based now competition. And the third term, the inter-settlements would meet. So Korogosho would meet Kahawa Soweto, uh, uh, like that. And the football, it was inter-villages, then inter-settlement, and then inter-constituency. Mm -hmm. And now we have the Kenya Harambe star, mm -hmm. yeah? uh, a professional player called uh, Timbe, mm -hmm. Ayub. Ayub, yeah. Mm -hmm. He played, we have newspaper cuttings, he played in the Muamuko and scored 13 goals against, <laughs> <laughs> against, <laughs> against uh, uh, Soweto. <laughs> the whole idea was to create a community mm -hmm. so that with each activity you are building space for someone. Mm -hmm. So the other youth now who are now the senior, uh, though our focus was more of helping the children, the generation, but you are also dealing with a group that is already there. So this other group wanted something to engage them. It being difficult to start savings with them, they struggled with the savings. They borrowed money, though they never paid. Uh, they had the challenges uh, of, of, of governance, and it's the youth thing, you know. Uh, for us, what was important was keeping them there, yeah? <laughs> not out there. So it, 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 it moved. One thing uh, we wanted to do with Mamuko with the, with the children movement is that we said we wanted to build local philanthropy around it. Our other programs were built around grant financing from north-based organizations and, and we said let us see if uh, corporate social responsibility and other people, uh, local people would would support the children movement and the youth movement. And we had many, many volunteers who came to give talks, mentors, and one of them happened to be a marketing manager in the Nation Media Group. Uh, and he was a marketing manager for the Swahili paper, Taifa, eh? Taifa Leo. Uh, and he came and he was fascinated by all this young energy and uh, he said you know what I want to write this story uh, in Taifa and he went off and he, he wrote the story and then he realized there are many stories so he came back and said can your young people write stories and I'll publish them in the paper and he gave us a column and and some people started to write. So we had a cadre, I think of about, we must have begun with about 20 young writers, yes. all writing in Swahili about, about their settlements and getting published uh, in a national paper, which was good. But uh, the Nation Media Group wanted to get involved more. Mm -hmm. And then they became the sponsors uh, for the football tournament. Mm -hmm. And that year we had a tournament where I remember 544 children participated mm -hmm. and they bought all the uniforms, they bought balls, they bought um, 
trophies, mm -hmm. goal posts. Mm -hmm. So it was a very good uh, partnership. And it was very fulfilling for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they had these matches in the sports pages mm -hmm. of, of the paper. So they wanted to get involved even more. So they said, okay, with the older ones, can they become newspaper vendors? Mm -hmm. And then we looked for, we didn't look, the, the, there was a lot of young blood floating around. Mm -hmm. We got uh, youth to learn how to be vendors. Mm -hmm. And they got an incentive to, to get the first batch of newspapers free and then thereafter, that they would have started a vending business. The Swahili paper was also struggling with circulation, so, so this worked for the paper as well. And they said the people who would read the Swahili paper are mostly in the slum, but the vendors don't go to the slum. So let's get slum, slum youth. Of course, there are, there are challenges like distribution, the distribution vans didn't want to go into settlements because the paper is is circulated at 4 a.m. Mm. and they said we'll get mugged. Mm. <laughs> so we had the youth waiting for papers in, on highways at 4 a.m. Mm. Uh, some of them did very well, uh, some not so well. Uh, but I think a number of them became and still continue to be big newspaper vendors. Um, I think there was one guy in Madare and one guy in Pumwani. So that relationship was that relationship was a bit fulfilling. Now the children mentorship program evolved to a children council. We looked at Habitat that time was struggling with the city council of Nairobi to come up with a model, a children council model in the city. And we challenged it because the children who are involved in putting up a children council were children from the middle class. So we said, no, that's, let's create a model with the opportunity we have. So through the, the mentorship program, I remember a meeting that was held and it was an election and that child was elected the first mayor <laughs> of the city, <laughs> the first child mayor. The whole idea was to build the children council to become now the space for also them participating in governance issues so they would uh, have departments of education child rights something to do with the health something to do with the environment i think it was a good idea and and even before the model w was developed and then there was the convergence then with uh bidan challenging us to to start mentoring that there is an important constituency that we are not we are not seeing uh, but that, that constituency was being seen by the UN and the city I think the initial children representatives at the UN if you looked at the names they looked like the names of the country's cabinet mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the children of people in high positions and then there was this election, so we, we thought to ourselves how are we going to do this and we figured if we get many, many children from the slums on election day to the venue, we could make up for the resources we didn't have for every elected position. When a child from the slum stood up, they got more votes than anyone else. <laughs> and it followed that the junior mayor came from the slums. It was a big success to have a slum child sitting in the next office to the mayor. What happened <laughs> is that the Muamko <laughs> evolved. The group that we captured in the mentorship program were able to go to where Muamko expected them to go because the whole idea was for them to be converted through the process, and they themselves become now mentors and continue. And we've had good case, uh, uh, good stories, uh, stories of change uh, by individuals uh, in Huruma. You go to Huruma, you find Jonte. You go to Madari, you find Nkaka. 
you go to Korogosha, you find Thuo, you go to um, South Kiambio, uh, Nairobi, uh, Italy South, you find Chief Florence. Now she's a chief yeah, and she was a protege of the program. Do you know the youth movement is different from the from Mungano because what happens is that you invest a lot in young people 16 to, to 20 uh, but then they are moving on in, in life and then all that investment one day goes you go and look for this young guy and he's found a job or he's gone for training it's good that he's on the right path but you start to rebuild again mm -hmm. and every few years you rebuild again and then those skills move on and then you rebuild again uh, so that that is a big difference with with uh, Mugano. 2010 the transition mm. yeah of the federation from Pamoja Trust mm. uh, that really affected um, a lot um, the momentum that was building for the feder for the youth federation because at that time it, it had even in fact, it was even struggling now to give itself a structure. I remember Nakuru now was on board, Mombasa was on board, Kisumu was on board. They had, it had even taken now a, a, almost, a, a, almost a similar structure as the National Federation. And they were negotiating even for space and resources mm -hmm. um, within the Federation. So it's only that now with that transition, the Federation had a bit of its internal um, uh, consolidation and internal issues which it had to first focus on. And the youth again wasn't so much of a, uh, of a priority uh, at that time to, 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 to now. Um, I think this is the time now the Federation again is coming back to uh, soberness. We are realizing actually we are surrounded by youth. And the question has not been not involving the youth is what how do we involve what what model will work best for this so i guess it's the question of that transition but the need is still there the need is still there i think the federation has an opportunity to use now the young uh, members uh, the young women the young men who are in the movement to continue going back to build generations within a program